So this is a huge topic. How to develop an emerging brand is a big undertaking and a lot of people go to school for this. At the end of the day, they don't know nearly as much as you're going to know if you put your product into the market and you stand next to it and speak to your clients. So that's gonna be one kind of overarching theme that you'll find that I'm gonna keep telling you. Um, because at the beginning of it, you know, when you're developing a brand, you're gonna to wanna to start with an unfair strategy. You know, if you want a successful product, you need to know what you have that everybody else doesn't. So if you're a doctor and you're developing a product for your patients that doesn't exist, that is an unfair advantage. If your uncle is the head of the cosmetics aisle at Walmart, that is an unfair advantage. So knowing what your unfair advantage is before developing your strategy around that, that's gonna make your product successful. Because if you try to copy another brand, if you try to build something a little bit better or have a little bit better mousetrap, it's not going to be successful because they already have a head start on you. So knowing your unfair advantage first, understanding that strategy, any entrepreneur will tell you that is how you get started on the right foot. Um, if we've learned anything from the music business, that's the only way to get in there is to have an unfair advantage. Um, secondly, knowing your clients is essential. Whenever we've looked at emerging brands that have really risen to the top fast, it's because they understand what their clients are looking for. So use the terms that your clients are using, understand what kind of jargon, what they're typing into Google, use the tools at your hands, you know, Google Trends, those kind of items. Uh, find out what colors they're using. Look at the spectrum of all the other products that they're picking up off the shelf and figure out how you can integrate that in your product. If baby blue's in season, throw baby blue in there. Um, knowing where your clients are next is really gonna be kind of your next path to market because that's gonna be where you want to be. Whether you position yourself uh, as far as the retailer, the websites, knowing where your clients are looking is going to be essential for you being in front of those clients. So start that list, start making up, find where they're shopping, where they're looking for information, what kind of social media they're on, and then position your brand. The brand position is all about how your product is different. Why is it better? And how can you best convey that in as few words as possible and in as best images as possible? Because at the end of the day, whether your product's on the shelf uh, or online, the image is going to be what stands out. And having that differentiating factor is going to be what stands out so that they understand what it is, they know why they're buying it, and they know why they should pick it up off the shelf to learn more instead of just going to what they already know. Um, that goes into your brand messaging when they do pick up the product off the shelf. How are they going to identify with the brand? Is it going to resonate with them? Are you working with hipsters? Are you working with yoga moms? Are you working with um, somebody who's retired or somebody who's getting out of graduate school? You need to know who they are and how to address the concerns that they have that they didn't know they had. So if they're picking up a product for the first time and they don't know what it does, how are they going to know that it's not going to hurt them? How are they going to know that it's not that your skin tanner isn't going to make their skin too dark or if it's not going to work well enough and it's going to be too light? You need to address those concerns and have that all right there at their fingertips before they even proceed down to why it's better. Um, next is really about how to generate that recurring client um, into content marketing, building a reputation having that visibility online and developing those partnerships. Like we saw with the rise of TikTok, partnerships are really the way that brands can build a following and get in front of their, um, their prospective clients. Websites are a great way to bring information. So if you want to have somebody join you, you wanna give them a compelling reason why to go to the website and sign up, why to follow your Instagram. You wanna give more than you're receiving. Because at the end of the day, that's what's going to drive traffic to you. And finally, you're not going to do anything 
unless you have a well thought out schedule. Know how to get the information in front of your clients. Plan a year in advance. Understand when you're going to put the product content out there and what specials you're gonna be coming up with, what partnerships are gonna be dropping when, and where you're gonna have the product on the shelf so that you can drive your customers to that retail store. So that retail store will be happy that they have customers coming in for your product and will keep you on the shelf. Finally, none of this is going to be worth anything if you don't implement, track, and adjust. Because at the end of the day, you could be 100% certain that something's going to work where it's not. And you're going to need to pivot. You're going to need to adjust. You're going to need to figure out another way to achieve that goal. So being flexible, understanding that you're going to need to make adjustments along the way, and having that plan in place will make your product successful and really bring it to that next level. So developing your emerging brand is all about scheduling, implementation, tracking, and adjusting.